Welcome to another Will Wright's book. Um, sort of a late night update. I guess technically it's Friday now. It's uh, 1244. <clears throat> a rare late night video. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Today I looked at my notes from last summer where I was writing to myself about what I wanted to write. And I was interested to see that the first thing I wrote down was to write a book about the most beautiful program ever written. I mean, ever, yeah, most beautiful program ever written. So that was the first thing I wrote down last July or whatever. Um, and then I had a whole bunch of pages following that, whereas, you know, going into detail with a bunch of ideas. And I don't think I ever mentioned it again. So uh, that was sort of my first reaction. And then for whatever reason, I put that aside, maybe because I was tired of that topic or thought I was going to overdo it with the, the talk in a book. I'm not sure. But it's just interesting going back to my to my notes. Um, so I certainly did consider writing a book on it. That was my first inclination apparently, but, uh, I didn't really pursue it. But today I <clears throat> sat down with my notebook and I thought of a few things. Um, I also watched, uh, a few interviews with writers, one with Neil Gaiman, and his advice to an inspiring writer is finish what you're what you're writing. Finish it. Um, that writing only gets you so far. You need to finish things. So certainly that's been a problem for me. And so one of the things I was thinking is, well, how do I finish this thing, this uh, this book, this infinite, or the uh, sorry, the imperishable wonderland of infinite fun talking about all the mind-blowing stuff with the interpreter seen from a relational standpoint. You know, how do I avoid turning that into a 10-year project or something? And then the other thing that I've been thinking about, which I talked about last time, I think, a little bit, was how do I create something that's not going to be out of date in a couple of years in the sense of, you know, here's a specific scheme implementation for a specific version of scheme on a specific operating system. And you run this particular benchmark and it takes 2.3 seconds and what, whatever. You know, that's very perishable type of information. And yet that might still be important to talk about in some sense. Um, so I was thinking about these two issues today and just about the book in general, what do I want to do? And I had a couple thoughts. So one, as far as organization, I thought, well, okay, so if we're going to have a book on imperishable wonderland of infinite fun, which is going to have all the mind blowing stuff, then I think it also makes sense to have a companion volume written at the same time and realize, oh, the name should be Perishable Wonderland of Infinite Fun. So we should have the Imperishables uh, volume, which is much more abstract. It's much more about the ideas and the mind-blowing concepts and the capabilities. And it's not talking about this runs in 2.3 seconds on an Intel i9, whatever. Um, that That is the perishable part. So if I want to get into specific details that are perishable, well, then that can go in the perishable wonderland of infinite fun and sort of keep those separate. So there's the imperishable part and then the perishable part sort of supporting it in a way. You know, the perishable volume is what keeps the imperishable part uh, from just being a demo that someone couldn't reproduce or 
you know, it's not smoke and mirrors, that kind of thing. So that would be part of part of the idea. So I, I like this idea. I, I'd thought about this a little bit anyway, of, of splitting these up. Um, but as soon as I thought the name Perishable Wonderland of Infinite Fun, so then the sort of the overall project is the Wonderland of Infinite Fun. And we have the Imperishable Wonderland and the Perishable Wonderland. And each of these words, by the way, is chosen carefully. So Imperishable Wonderland of Infinite Fun. I don't know if I talked about what those words mean, but if um, they are all are all very uh, very carefully chosen. So you can think about what what those words might mean, and maybe even some of them are chosen to have multiple meanings. Um, I also thought maybe there should be a live Wonderland of Infinite Fun, and by that I mean something like the live code. Um, or something equivalent where you can actually run this either on a server or remote server, try it out, or I guess maybe can compile to WASM or something and run it in the browser. So, um, you know, have a, have a live version of things, but I also like books. So I think, uh, you know, software is very perishable like this, you know, something like a website, um, that could be extremely perishable. So that's even more perishable than the perishable wonderland probably. Um, but that's not to say that it wouldn't be a nice thing to have. It's just that, you know, we're sort of increasing amounts of perishability. Um, and the imperishable wonderland of infinite fun, that should be readable 30 years from now and basically should have the same thing. You know, maybe we've, Whoever's working on this stuff um, has pushed it much further, hopefully in 30 years, but but the everything in that book should still hold, whereas the perishable stuff, um, you know, hopefully the running times are, are sort of laughable because computers have gotten so much faster or we, we know how to run things on accelerators, who knows? And uh, the live part, you know, who knows? Who knows if live code exists 30 years from now? Um, and then I thought of two other possible um, artifacts that that could go with this project, the Wonderland of Infinite Fun project. One would be the speculative Wonderland of Infinite Fun. So this is about, you know, ideas and approaches that might work um, to be explored. You know, this sort of like research direction, because one of the things I want to do is tie in uh, sort of the research and research agenda to this overall project. Uh, and that, that I think, by the way, is one of the things I was missing before is that when I'm writing a book or working on some document and it's purely about things that I or other people have done in the past, you know, so it's showing people what we've done or teaching people something, you know, I, I think that's fine. However, if I'm spending a huge amount of effort on that, um, you know, I want to think that somehow this is going to also lead to uh, new things. And so that's, you know, the speculative wonderland would be, about sort of possible pass forward. And also, you know, writing, uh, writing these books would, would, uh, I think help encourage me to push on some of the areas that I've wanted to make progress on. And I've got various ideas there. And then, uh, the training arc of infinite fun, which is sort of the training program for someone who wants to get to the get to the point where uh, they understand what's in the imperishable and the perishable uh, volumes and uh, they can start taking a crack at the speculative wonderland so it'd be sort of the the uh, training materials for someone who wanted to you know get into this um, up to uh, and including doing research original research um, so in the beginning at least I would think 
that I would do the Imperishable Wonderland, of course, and also the Perishable Wonderland at the same time. You could sort of think of it as almost like literate programming with Weave and Tangle from Donald Knuth, although, you know, sort of sliced in a different direction. Um, but in any case, you know, trying to separate as cleanly as possible um, the imperishable from the perishable part. And the other aspects of, of this, uh, I think I would wait on those. Um, the live wonderland would be the other thing that potentially I could do. You know, potentially I could do imperishable, perishable, and live all at once, maybe with some special infrastructure or something. Uh, I want to be a little careful. You know, I, I basically want to make progress. So I, I want to be a little careful of cutting out too much at the same time. Um, but I don't know, maybe the live wonderland would help me write it somehow. Uh, so that's what I'm currently thinking organizationally. And as far as how do I finish, then, you know, what I'm thinking is that this would be an ongoing project and, um, you know, I would start writing the imperishable and perishable parts and I would, you know, you can imagine short versions of those that address some of the interesting things like we can do quines or, you know, introducing the relational interpreter and, you know, showing how we do basic encodings of things and basic program synthesis, going up to quines and then, you know, going up to other programs, going up to like append recursively and, and so forth. So, you know, there are a whole bunch of things that could be shown and part of the idea is it can, can sort of build this up uh, a little bit at a time. And then, you know, each one's kind of a version and it just builds up over, over multiple editions, if you want to call it that way. But, you know, maybe there are 200 editions instead of two or three editions in order to, uh, to sort of incorporate all the interesting stuff. So that's part of what I was thinking about today. Um, see if that makes sense. And, you know, I'll sleep on it tonight and, you know, tomorrow I'll, um, see if I can maybe outline what the imperishable wonderland and perishable wonderland would look like, or at least, I don't know if I'm fully outline, but at least, uh, try to th figure out what examples I'd want to have. What are the mind blowing things? Now, whether or not this exact organization makes sense, I'm not sure, um, it has some disadvantages as well, but yeah, that that's what I was coming up with, and and I like the I like the uh, the title "Perishable Wonderland of Infinite Fun." I think that one's fun. So, um, anyway, that's what I was thinking about today, and to try to solve the problems of you know how do I keep this from becoming hopelessly out of date if the perishable part becomes hopelessly out of date well fine maybe that gets updated but the imperishable wonderland part shouldn't have to be updated that's the that's the main point and you should be able to read the imperishable wonderland and that should be in some sense timeless in the way that math or logic is timeless and then the perishable part well you know maybe that gets up to date or um Hopefully, at least it's uh, something still readable in, you know, the relatively near future. Someone could could read it, and if they really tried, they could uh, piece together exactly how to get everything to work. Um, but anyway, uh, we'll see. I, I'll see if that that makes sense. But that's what I came up with this morning, and I'll. Hope to think about it again tomorrow morning. All right. Good night. Have a good one.